Hello, everybody. Welcome back for day number eight. It is so good to be with you again today. Thank you for continuing to study the Bible with me. Now let's read the Bible together. So we're going to pray first. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for another day to get to um, represent you here on earth. God, thank you for another day to read and study uh, the Bible. And God, we pray that you would help us to grow more towards you. That God, we trust you as the giver of life. We trust you as um, the great source of life. And so, Lord, we pray that as we read this, God, we would connect to you. And God, you would help us to become more um, of the people you want us to be. You would help us to become more like your son, Jesus, that we reflect his love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. God, I love you. Pray this on your son's name. Amen. All right. So we are today going to read Colossians 2, verses 1 through 3. So let's read that together now. I want you to know how much I have agonized for you and for the church at Laodicea and for many other believers who have never met me personally. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have a complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In him lie all the treasures of hidden of wisdom and knowledge. So we've prayed, we've read, now let's study. So we're going to look for any words we might not know. And one of the words you might not know is agonized. This word agonized, which means to experience great physical pain or mental pain, anguish. That it's uh, we or I, this place is Paul, I have agonized, I've experienced great mental pain for you, great physical pain that I, it's torn my heart apart. I'm thinking about you guys and the situation that you're in. So he says, um, I want you to know how much I have um, suffered for you or have experienced great physical or mental pain for you and for the church at Laodicea. That he's saying, I'm invested in you. I care deeply about you. He says, and for many other believers who have never met me personally. So he says, just because you are a Christian, just because you are a believer in Jesus I have prayed for you. I've been, my heart is broken for you because I know um, what you've gone through. I know um, how hard it is to follow Jesus at times. And so I'm, I'm praying for you because there's great persecution at their time. That it was not an easy thing to be a Christian. It was not easy just to go to church on Sunday. That um, they were, um, it was dangerous to be a Christian. He says, I want them to be encouraged and knit together by the strong ties of the love. So he goes, I want them to be encouraged. These believers, this is who he's, pray, he's praying for or hoping for. He says, I want them to be encouraged and knit together. I want them to be unified by strong ties of love. What's going to bring them together? Brotherly and sisterly love. Family love for one another. Seeing each other as siblings um, and adopted brothers and sisters in Christ. He says, I want them to have complete confidence. Not just some confidence. Not just a little bit, but complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan. That he wants them to be, um, the people can't trick them. The people can't lead them astray. Because that's what's the problem, is that the the Colossians, people were coming in and saying, you know, you believe in Jesus, and you think that that's going to be enough to save you, and that's not really enough, and you got to do this and this, and you got to believe this also. And it's not the truth. And the reality is sometimes um, we'll come across people in our lives who will say, well, you just can't believe in Jesus. You got to do this and this, and you have to also um, do this thing or that thing or believe this thing as well. And the reality is that we are saved. We are rescued through trusting and believing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, that we surrender our lives to God, that we say, my life is no longer my own, but it's yours, God, that you get to give me direction in life. You get to tell me how I get to live. You get to tell me what I need to do. But ultimately, um, it is my faith that saves me, but what it produces is me surrendering my life. What it produces is me becoming more like Jesus, which is changing me, that there is more love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control in my life. There are more things that God are developing me. There's more obedience to Christ that's growing in me. But it's because of this life transformation that happened through faith. And so faith occurs first and then transformation. 
faith occurs first and then obedience. That faith is what saves and obedience is an indicator that I have been saved. It's not what saves me. It shows that I am saved. So, yeah. So, it's what it's uh, an indicator that says you have been saved. It says that they would have complete confidence and that they would understand God's mysterious plan. Now, what's God's mysterious plan? His mysterious plan is rescuing us. So, he, has, he says, which is Christ himself. Christ is a mysterious plan that God would send his own son into the world. That God would send his one and only son into the world to become human, become like us. That he was fully God, but he was also fully human. He became like us. And becoming like us, he um, was tired. He got sick. He got hungry. Um, He maybe got uh, exhausted at times. And yet, he was still God. Yet, he still could command uh, the wind and the waves and the sea. That he was still God. But God came to die. That he came to die on a cross to take the place of sinners like me and sinners like you so that we could become transformed into redeemed saints. So we could become transformed into redeemed followers of Jesus that are, as we talked about yesterday, we're made perfect through Christ. That no longer um, are we identified by our sins, but now we're identified by Christ's perfection. So then in him, in Jesus, lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So we said, remember, early on he was praying that they would be complete in their understanding of God's will, that they would have wisdom, spiritual wisdom, and they would have an understanding. He's saying, how you get this? It's through looking at Jesus. That as we understand more and more of the gospel, as we understand more and more of who we are through our identity in Christ, that as we see that we get all of the hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge that God provides. That we want to focus our minds, we want to focus our lives, we want to focus our eyes on Jesus. So we want to study him, we want to become like him, because in him is this great mystery that God is rescuing us and saving us through him, and this great uh, treasure of wisdom and knowledge. And so it is well worth our time this morning to dig into who Jesus is. It's well worth our time to study who he is. So now let's go to what's the big idea. What's the big idea from this? Well, the big idea is that Christ, to me, is the goal. Jesus um, is our teacher. Um, he is our savior. That um, Paul, he just wants them to grow. And the way that he wants them to grow is by following Jesus. It's by studying Jesus. It's by thinking about Jesus. And so I want to make Jesus the center of my life. Jesus needs to be the center of my life. That's probably my big idea, my big idea for the day. And why does he need to be the center of my life? Well... That complete confidence, it comes through Jesus. That Jesus is the mysterious plan. It's him that God is revealing uh, treasure to us through the wisdom and knowledge. That Jesus is the source of wisdom and knowledge. And so I, I need him to be the center of my life. That I want to base all my life around him. That if, um, let me draw over here. So when you think about uh, the sun, And I'm not a great uh, artist, nor am I a great um, but all the planets, they revolve around the sun. I won't do that one because it'll be off the page. But they all revolve around the sun. And the reality is that the sun is what is most important. It's what's central. It's got the greatest weight. And so it pulls everything around it. That everything, it uh, gravitates around, it circles around the sun. And the reality is, for my life, this needs to be Jesus. This needs to be Jesus. And as my life revolves around Jesus, and it's so easy for something else to take this place, whether it be sports, whether it be money, whether it be success or grades or um appeal or popularity or 
um, whatever it might be, it's so easy for something to take this spot that needs to be Jesus' spot. That if Jesus is what my life revolves around, that I'm going to eventually, over time, I'm going to get all of the treasure of Jesus' wisdom and knowledge. And so Jesus needs to be what's center of my life. So uh, we now have, we've studied, we've read, and so now we've gotten to our big idea. So now we can do the application. For me, the application today is, is there anything that's at the center? At the center of my life that isn't Jesus. And you can just take a few minutes to pray and say, God, would you reveal to me what is at the center of my life? God, what is the thing that my life revolves around? What is the thing that I'm spending so much time dwelling on that it pulls me back around it day after day? What is that thing? And figure that out. And if it's not Jesus, then what I would encourage you to do is say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I have built my life around this thing and this thing. It might be a great thing. It might be a good thing. But it's not what should be in the center of my life because it's not the ultimate source of treasure, of wisdom, of knowledge. It doesn't give me confidence. It isn't holding my faith together. You, Jesus, are what I need. And so would you forgive me and would you help me to make you center? God, would you help me to figure out what I need to do so that Jesus could be the center of my life? So let me pray for you guys. Let me pray for us. And then you guys can write a short reflection sentence. Father God, I thank you for this time together um, with whoever's watching this. God, I pray that you would help us to make you center of our lives. That God, it's so easy for really good things, things like family, um, school, um, work, whatever it might be. God, there's a lot of good things in our world, but they can't sustain being center of our life. That ultimately, if we try to put those at center, it doesn't have the power, the ability to maintain us. And what will happen is we'll spin out of orbit, we'll spin out of chaos, and life will get hard. And we'll um, self-inflict wounds on ourselves from having something at center that can't be the center. So God, we ask for your help. God, pray that you would reveal, reveal to us what's central to us. And God, that would cause us to um, replace that thing with you. That we would put Jesus there and we would um, build our lives around him. God, we ask for your help in this. Pray this all in your son's name. Amen. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Looking forward to uh, meeting with you guys again tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.